white people are very intrigued by black people who are in places that they don't assume black people should be. Oftentimes when I'm traveling and I'm in five star hotels and I am to myself, white people not only are intrigued, but they wanna have conversations with me. I, I travel solo for a reason, and the way people come up to me with curiosity, well, where are you from? So what do you do? It's almost like, for lack of a better term, it's almost like a circus to them. <laughs> When I was at the Four Seasons in Bali and I'm at the chef's table dinner, someone at the table next to me wants to come over and start talking to me. When they see me alone, feel like they need to entertain me when actually I don't want to talk to anybody. Like I'm good. Well, first of all, let's talk about she's a beautiful girl. Yeah. I think that she's a very beautiful girl. Like her face is I like yeah. she's pretty. <clears throat> And then you got to understand that you also, you're out of the country. You fly all out of the country and stuff like that. And, you know, as black people, you have these braids and locks and stuff. Uh -huh. So that's interesting to white people, locks and braids and things. But she's pretty. It's interesting to white people. Girl, you've seen it. Girl, I've had braids and stuff. And it's like, what, what happened? I'm like, hey. <laughs> what you say? Hey. <laughs> Keep your hands out of my hair. They do do that. <laughs> Give me my space. Keep, it, keep your hands out of my hair. Are, but why are, are they? Why are they so fascinated? Well, it's the melanin. It's the braids. It's the. It's the. How can I do this? Give me this right here. What? What you not eating? Oh, you. Oh, you trying to get on my dessert? Is it, you seem like not to want it. Where's well, I, my fork is over there. Oh, okay, I'll handle it. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like. <clears throat> White people do stay in our business. It's like I've never seen a more curious creature. You move into a neighborhood, they want to know what you do. Oh, what kind of work do you do? Oh, I don't. I don't work. <laughs> so we not nosy like that, black people? Yeah, but we're not going to come and ask you. We're gonna, gonna figure it. We're gonna, we gonna figure it out on our own. Girl, they over there selling dope out there. Right. You, you know. You know what they be doing over girl, there. You they look at you be looking at. Girl, they selling dope out of there. Girl. That's right. Girl, it's four cars. It's four. Wait a minute. It's three white men yeah. over there. What? Girl, they whole selling pussy. All right. <laughs> we we ain't gonna come and knock on their door and ask. But they will definitely come and ask you. Also, oh, what are you guys? <laughs> I think white people are adventurers. You see, they discovered they America. Are, they... <laughs> Oh my god! You can't discover something that's not that's. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> that was already preoccupied. But here's the gag. I said it because we we they were trying to drag bring us up about this being a Spanish speaker's <laughs> place already. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, they just forgot the Native Americans. I was I was just nodding to the shelf from the other day. <laughs> right. They they didn't just forgot all of the the Native Americans that were here. <laughs> the indigenous people. They didn't speak Spanish. No. No. Nah. Imagine you in your own home and somebody come and he say, Andale, Andale, <laughs> Andale, Andale, Venga aquí. <laughs> you just in your house and somebody come here. Hola, <laughs> Andale, Andale, Andale. Nah, bitch, speak English in my and house. Then, and then years later, somebody tell you because you said, bitch, I was also brought over here and taught English. Right. That I don't want to have to learn that. Girl, and somebody like, only online telling you you're uh you're racist because you like saying, "Bitch, I live in a place where we were speaking English." Uh huh. <laughs> and then you tell me that they were already speaking Spanish here, and you forget that they came and stole this from people that were speaking their own language. Right. right. Imagine that. But see, when they continue to uh, redact Black history from the books, they can try to get away with those lies. Well, that's that's what. Oh, what? I What's got wrong? a text. Oh. Mm hmm. Hold on. The House of Milan. What is that? I received your package. I received the package from the House of Milan. I'm going to do a box opening. I don't know if it's going to be tomorrow or when I come back from where I'm going to be, but I did receive it. I thank you immensely. It's amazing. Mm. <clears throat> so I want to let the House of uh, Milan know 
that I did receive their their gift that they sent me. Okay. They said Bishop Stewart is an LBGT covered Bishop Stewart girl. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> but uh but yeah you know white folks will do all that kind of nonsense mm. i need anika put anika's comment up please mm -hmm. the people of color that were here before the transatlantic slave trade spoke kin him kim yeah mm. So to that person that was trying to cause discord on our Twitter, <laughs> tweeting us saying Bernice that, or something. that we were we were being racist mm. without holding your ancestors accountable for doing the most racist, heinous thing. It's coming in asserting dominance over some spaces that was already occupied. Imagine you sitting in your home and somebody pulls up outside with a horde of people with 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 guns. And and troops and come in here and start saying, I are you the man? Right. Venga aquí. Siéntate. Dame. And then take your shit. <laughs> Angel home. And say they discovered new land. <laughs> <laughs> and you have the audacity to tell black people, people of color, that were drug. Come on, Craig, help me now. I'm listening. Because you have the HSBC. Yes. <laughs> That were drugged, snatched, taken, enslaved, and brought to help build around the land mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that you lived in, help build that up after they've also taken from the people that were in that house. Don't come telling me that we're racist. You have the unmitigated, am I saying it correctly, Craig? Yeah, you unmitigated have the goal. unmitigated gall to use racist and us in a sentence. Do not do that. I was looking this up. It, it says here that um, don't do. You have the unmitigated gall. The it said the, it says like the original language is spoken here. You said we. You are still feeding into bigotry. How? Who said that? How are we feeding into bigotry, friend? Please enlighten me. How are we feeding into bigotry? It's saying that there were various Native Native American languages. Um. And then it says, and then Spanish, of course, too, because of course Christopher Columbus was a Spaniard. These are hard truths that you don't that y'all don't want to talk about. But Christopher didn't even uh didn't even discover it. Correct. These are hard truths that you don't want you don't y'all don't want to talk about this stuff because it stings you in a way where you have to you you have to think and think about it and think about it like if you were in your home sitting on your sofa. And someone pulled up, came into your home, and told you, bitch, they just discovered a new place, and they they began to live in your home, and then they go and grab mm -hmm. people of color. No, because don't, you, you missed part. part. They moved you out. They moved you out. <laughs> forcibly. And, then, and forcibly move you out, <laughs> and then go grab people of color and enslave them and make them till the land. And expand your house mm -hmm. to fill their families in. To fill their family. You got to think about it from that space. Imagine you sitting at home on your sofa, eating your paella or whatever it is that you were eating. And then you then then someone uh, imagine if we were the colored people that did this to y'all. Imagine you and your white skin. Or your Spanish skin, right? Hold on. Come on, help me, Craig. I'm listening. And you're in your Spanish skin, and you're sitting in your home cooking your paella and a <laughs> car full of niggas. Hello? Come on, Mo, help me. A car full of black niggas pull up with dreads and gold teeth. <laughs> and ski masks. And not ski masks. They came full face. Open up. <laughs> and all of their black children <laughs> came into your home, put you out. And then when it got people that look like you and made them build your house open and then tell the world that they found this place and it's theirs. <laughs> Just change the skin tone and then see how we feel. 
All you got to do is change the skin tone. Because right now, if a colored person come into your house right now, you want to have the right to shoot and kill them right. for coming mm. into your home right now. Let's talk about it. Quick. Right. Since we're the bigots and since we're the, the racists, imagine you in your home right now in this day and age and some niggas, some black ass niggas come from way off from the, if you live in Atlanta and you stay over here in, in, in Buckhead. Right. And some black niggas came from the West side. And say they just discovered your apartment building, and y'all, <laughs> and they finna move all you un unblack people out, and then go gather up people that look like y'all and some kin to y'all, and make y'all and make them expand that apartment building, and then they tell the world we found this place, this ours. Mm -hmm. Y'all gonna say y'all sound stupid, but you know what? Similarly, it's kind of kind of like how white folks are now deciding to move back into cities across this country. You know, because there was a great white migration to the suburbs and all of the blacks were left in the cities. Now you see the reverse of that happening across this country, no, also known as gentrification, where white folks have decided, because it was, it was called the white flight, but now white folks want to come back to the cities and now black folks got to move out. I'm going to tell you what happened in Baltimore. There were these projects, these high-rise buildings downtown Baltimore. It was um, Murphy Homes. Um, it was like they, those were low income buildings. When I tell you they, they imploded those buildings, they blew them up mm -hmm. and they moved all of those people who lived there to the suburbs outside of Baltimore because all of the white people wanted to move back downtown. So they had to get rid of those buildings because they were an eyesore. And all of the white people came downtown. They built all of these luxury condos and apartments and all the waterfront property. They started building all this shit up. Because white folks made the decision that they wanted to move back into the city. That's no different from what's happening here in Atlanta, what's happening in Philadelphia, what's happening in D.C. Which what happened in Miami. What was happening in Detroit. Because see, What these, happened in Miami. Correct. Cubans. But see, the thing is, in D.C., D.C. was once known as Chocolate City. Bitch is giving mocha now. <laughs> it ain't even chocolate no more. What's happened in Miami. Every time I turn on the TV, I hear, doo, 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 doo. What? Dum, 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 yeah. Dum. I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. It's happening in, in, in <laughs> LA as well. Wait the whole minute. Crenshaw district, the whole Crenshaw district was black. And anytime you think of Miami, you think of Salsa. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You don't think nothing Negro when you think Miami. No. Right. No. Not this day and time, Miami. No, no, no. We're not. This may sound racist or bigot. bigot no, this is factual. Bigot, but this is factual. When you think of Miami, you think of all Spanish mommies. Mommy, you don't think nothing African American. You don't think nothing about no ne Negro. And don't get me started on Lamert Park over there in Crenshaw. Because there were so many black owned businesses over there in Crenshaw. But the problem was the buildings that those black owned businesses were housed in weren't owned by black people. So the businesses were black owned, but the building was white owned. And so when those building owners or those landlords decided that they were going to go up on the rent, because now the property value in Lamert Park started to grow, go up, like the houses now over there are like a million plus. Damn. Crenshaw, bitch. And so a lot of those black owned businesses had to move. They had to because they didn't own the building. And this is what I say all of the time. Like we talk about owning property and own, having businesses. But if you don't own the building, you don't get to decide whether or not your rent is going to go up or not. You don't get to decide if they're going to renew your lease. And you didn't. Like, and that was my thing. Like, when, for example, like Kay Michelle used to have this restaurant down on uh, Edgewood Avenue. And she attracted all of this clientele like y'all would be sitting outside waiting to get in. And the problem was when they, when they started to, when the property value started to go up down there and, and Edgewood started to become like the happening place and black folks started going down there on Fridays, it was food trucks and shit popping up. It was all these college kids were down there bringing all this money down there. Those landlords who owned those buildings, including the one that came Michelle was rent, had her a I'm restaurant in. When they decided we're now going to take this rent up from two thousand dollars a month, let's say, to five, now you didn't build this clientele over there. Now you got to move your people. Now you got to move your restaurant. Yeah. So that's why, again, 
Candy owns that OLG. Bitch, she bought the building. Yep. Businesswoman. She's a smart businesswoman. She owns the building. But I just, I, I know that these are very uncomfortable conversations when you are a fan of us or you like us or whatever. But don't watch our show to critique us. Watch our show to learn. We're not saying that you this is the other, but we're just only speaking facts because and especially when we have to turn the lens around and ask you, imagine you sitting in your home as the color that you are. Right. Watching your television and some black heavy on the beat, the black, the BL okay, and some blacks pull up outside. Mm hmm. Carlos trucks field mm -hmm. come into your home and tell you. Hey, this is ours. Yeah. This is our house. We found this. Right. And see, again, going back to Candy, let's just say that restaurant stopped working. And, and you know, y'all stopped going over there to eat. She still owns the building. She can convert that to something else. You understand what I'm saying? She could dem demo that bitch and make it a parking lot, a paid You understand what I'm saying? Like, she still owns the building. So this goes back to what we talked about, I think, on the last episode of Fag Talk. We were talking about so, so how so often we will sell our grandmother's house, yes. our parents' house. But this is why we're back here now, because we were talking about that, like how how I'm from Miami, just like you said, you're from, you from Baltimore, Baltimore yeah. and Baltimore ain't looking like what Baltimore no. was. You know what I'm saying? But then who do we hold accountable? Because when we, no shade, when we had it, did we clean it up? Well, that's just it. Like, we have culpability, too. And that's why I say, as much as we like to talk about what white people have done to us, we don't spend enough time talking about how we've been a disservice to each other as well. We, and we are still currently right. a disservice to each other. Yeah. Currently in yeah. this state right now. Right. And so, you know, when I when I have these types of conversation and then somebody tries to hold my feet to the fire and it's just like, no, I don't have any problem with anybody mm -hmm, that's, that's mm -hmm. Spanish or whatever because you can't help what you are. Right. You can't help that you're Spanish. You can't help that you're white. You can't. Mm -hmm. These are things that you can't change. Right. Just like that we can't help and change that Sorry. we're black. We can't do or that. Or queer. Or queer. We can't change that. Mm -hmm. But we also can't erase the facts of the things that happen and that these things are still, these systems are still in place that people like you are benefiting from. Yes. Yes. We can't sit here and act like that. These systems are not still in structurally in place. Right. And you, because you are Spanish or because you are white, you are benefiting from the things that happened long ago. Case in point. I don't, that's a perfect segue. I don't think I've ever told this story over here. I've told this story on my live stream. Y'all, you remember that show, um, Antique Road Show? I used to watch Antique Road Show. For those who don't know what Antique Road Show is, it's like a traveling show, and you could bring like something from your house, and they would have an appraiser there to appraise it to let you know if there was any value to it. Uh -huh. So a lot of times people would come on the show and they would bring like an old desk, old chair, whatever. It was like Shit that was passed down in their family. Yeah. Make a very long story short. One of the times I had to stop watching the show after this because, bitch, I got so upset. There was a white woman that came on the show. She brought one of those floor pots, like a vase, but it was like a, it was like a floor pot size. Uh -huh. And she brought it in and the appraiser was sitting there and, and he said, so can you tell me anything about this, about this vase? Like, do you know anything about it? And this little white lady said, no, I don't know anything about it. You know, it was just passed down generationally in my family. It was just kind of sitting up in the attic. Nobody really wanted it. I was just going to throw it out. But I just said, well, let me bring it down here and see if there's any, if there's a story behind it, if, if you know, if there's any value. When I tell you that bitch sat down and across from that appraiser and he said, well, let me tell you a little story about it. And so he says, do you, so he, he put it up on the table. He turned it around and shit. He said, well, there, there were only a handful of these made in the world. He said, there are only a handful left still in the world. He said, and, and the two, two of them are owned by museums. They're in museums, bitch. And you have one of the few. He said, now it's in pretty good condition. He said, but I do know. He said, you notice the little, the little crack down here? She said, yeah, I noticed that. He said, but still, other than that, it's in pretty pristine shape. He said, and do you notice down here? He said, can you see that name down there that scrawled into the, into the, into the clay? 
She says, yeah. He said, that says Dave. He was known as Dave the slave. Now, this is a white woman with this vase that had been passed down generationally in her family, not Dave's family, in her family. He said, do you have any idea how much something like this would go for in market today if we sold it at an auction house? She said, oh, no, no, no. He said, just take a guess. This lady said some little small amount. He said, no, in, in, re in, 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 in auction, it would sell for anywhere between forty-five and sixty thousand dollars. I need you to marinate on that for a second. Then I'm going to go ahead and let you know what that means. White people, let me explain something to you all, and for the black people who are listening who may not have thought about it in this way. When African people were slaves. Their talent was also owned by their slave owner. So in this case, this man, this slave, Dave the slave, he, 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 was, he, was a, he made pots. He, he knew how to do ceramics. So plates, bowls, cups, all that kind of shit, his slave owner would commission him to make this stuff. Then his slave owner would sell it to other white people to make money for his own family. So here this slave had to go and make this shit, but he didn't profit from any of it. The white man did. Now this one little piece of art, this, this, this one vase got passed down generationally, bitch, from slave time. So for all of the white people who don't understand, well, I don't understand how I benefit from it, bitch, you benefited because somebody passed some shit down and your ass benefited from it. So in the case of this, Let's just say that white lady took that vase to auction and got $60,000. Now, this lady was old. Let's say she got that $60,000. That white lady is then going to turn that $60,000 into a trust fund for her white grandchildren. So now, white grandchildren, now you can go to college for free. You don't have to get a student loan like I had to get. You can start your own business off that money that your grandmother left you. You can get married and not go into debt because your grandmother can take that 60000 and put down for your first home, for you to purchase a home. That's another reason why I had to stop watching them house hunter shows and shit. And them little young white couples would be on there, 28 and 30, and they got forty-five dollars and $50,000 to put down as a deposit, as a down payment on their house because your family has passed down some shit to you generationally. Where is Dave's family? <coughs> right. Dave's family probably sitting up on welfare somewhere. Somewhere getting a student loan. And this shit happens over and over and over and Still over. Still happening. Henrietta Lacks. That's another story. We talked about that. They used that woman's cells. Her family didn't benefit. Jack Daniels. That recipe was created by a slave. A white family owns that. Aunt Jemima. Pancakes. The story goes on and on and on and on. So white folks, when, when, when people say, oh, you need to pick yourself up by your bootstraps, bitch, we have, and we've done that. And every time we try to do it, you steal it. You take it, and then we don't benefit from it. And when I be on sitting here at this motherfucking table and tell y'all that I want a motherfucker that's going to speak English when I'm talking about going over my banking accounts, don't you feel no type of way about that because you speak Spanish. When, when it, when they, when, don't you feel no type of way. Don't you take that no kind of way as no read. Because we're not reading you. I just want somebody to speak English and understand, bitch, that I can... Why is, why is my shit down here? Right. Why is my, where is my deposit? Right. Don't you feel no type of way about that? Right. And get on your Twitter and say that we're bigots. Right. And we're this and the other. It's impossible for us to be that. Baby, if the fields were... If the playing field was leveled, if you all gave us what we were supposed to get, bitch, we would have we far surpassed you all. In terms of money and assets. See, this is why I don't praise and I don't marvel over white wealth. 